Today I want to talk about my computer science degree from the University of Alberta. More specifically, I want to use my degree as an example course selection for someone that is very interested in computer systems, either at the University of Alberta or within North America. I will then wrap up the video by motivating the need to discuss something else. Uh, there is more to a CS degree than just the insane grind of school and career. If you want to see me talk about that in detail, or think that this topic should reach more people due to its usefulness, then consider subscribing. It can cause YouTube to show my video to more people that may need this insight. Please note, this video is a bit long, but that's because I'm giving you the insight into my entire degree. It took as long as it did, as I had much to say. There's basically no filler here, just straight up content. Anyways, that's enough intro and motivation for the video. Let's not waste much time and get right into it. Well, fine, maybe not right into it. Because my degree actually started before I even applied to the University of Alberta. Here's what I mean. I got to skip a full semester of courses from the university just through the sheer volume of IP courses that I did in high school. This was not an option at other unis that I applied to and was actually a very important factor in choosing the University of Alberta. But I won't get too into that. This topic deserves its own video. Actually, do let me know in the comments if that is a video that you would like me to make at some point in the near future. Either way, back on topic. The University of Alberta gave me university credit for five courses and they were 100 level psychology course equivalent, human geography 100, economics 102, which is introductory macroeconomics, 100 level English language option and math 114 or intro to calculus one. Well, that's enough preamble. Let's move on. I started my degree in the fall semester of 2017. I was very cautious in my first year, so my course selection was what most people would call very reasonable. Let's start with this. Compute 274, Introduction to Tangible Computing 1. Fun, but challenging intro course. Used Arduinos in C. I really liked it, actually. It was a great introduction. Compute 495, Honor Seminar. I will mention this course once and ignore it from now on. It's a zero credit seminar where profs advertise their research to honor students. I mean, it's useful, but meh. Econ 101, Introduction to Microeconomics 1. I attended no lectures, just showed up for the midterms in the final, just used this course to get to the other more interesting econ courses. Math 115, Elementary Calculus 2. This class was very difficult, and my unfounded overconfidence did not help. I had to really put in some crazy effort for the final to do well. Sociology 100, Introduction to Sociology. You know what? Great course for when I was effectively fresh off the boat in Canada. Learned a lot about the culture here. Stat 151, Introduction to Applied Statistics 1. I mean, it's just stats, nothing to really say. And that was my first semester of first year. I enjoyed being an awful student as the workload did not actually kick in yet and my workaholism hasn't quite developed. Let's move on to winter 2018. This semester still had some cautious course choices. Compute 272, Formal Systems and Logic. It's basically intro to discrete math under a fancy name. Kinda dry and boring, but I'd enjoy it actually somewhat. Compute 275, Introduction to Tangible Computing 2. Man, this course was tough. The honors intro se sequence, the second year computer engineering students took as well, basically condensed regular intro one and two, systems programming in C along with data structures and algorithms into two courses. It was tough, very tough, but very rewarding. It has changed slightly since my year, which in my opinion is good. Econ 282, Intermediate Macroeconomics 1. Really fun course about macroeconomic theory that is presented as a case study of the 2008 financial crisis. The prof did a great job with the course. Math 125, Linear Algebra 1. It's Linalge. Not too difficult and basically essential for CS. If you're thinking of taking it, just do it. It's super worth it. Russian 303, Russian in context. Yes, I am a native speaker of the language, but this course did not teach Russian, just did some fun things in Russian. I really liked it. And that actually concludes my first year of regular classes. Because of how much I liked it so far, I loaded up on a bunch of much harder courses in second year, but also did a mandatory English requirement over that summer. Fun stuff, but let's get going to second year. All right, nothing too crazy here yet, just a slightly tougher schedule. 
Compute 229, Computer Organization Architecture. I adored this course. I love computer architecture as a topic. Yes, the assignments were hard and in assembly, but it's such a beautiful class. Compute 291, File and Database Management. If you want a job, you better take this class. Databases come up everywhere. I don't personally use almost anything I learned from this class at work myself, but I don't do regular software development anyway. Math 214, Intermediate Calculus 1. This course is really useful for ML and numerical methods, so if you're into that, do take it. Math 225, Linear Algebra 2. Great course that teaches you intuition about how matrix operations are nothing hard. I would call it essential, but many CS students are allergic to math, so it'll never become mandatory. STAT 252, Introduction to Applied Statistics 2. More hypothesis testing. Actually, a total bird course at our uni, and I thoroughly regret losing my notes. Finally, this was my first semester where I got a taste of systems courses, and I wanted more. Winter 2019 gave me more, a lot more. There is a bit of tribal knowledge at our university that I would like to make publicly known. Three compute courses in one semester can be tough. Four compute courses in a semester is painful as hell. Four compute courses in a math course in a semester is insanity. Four super heavy project-based compute courses and a non-trivial math course in one semester is effectively academic suicide. I'm not saying this to toot my horn, but because even I believe that that was real dumb of me to subject myself to, especially since it had some unforeseen consequences in the future. Let's get to it. Compute 301, Introduction to Software Engineering. You know, what is a better way to learn software engineering than have a person seemingly doing no work, a manager, force you to attend seemingly useless lectures, useless meetings, while you are forced to work in a large group on a decently sized Android app? I mean, I guess there really isn't one, so our uni adopted that approach. Design patterns are incredibly important, and another course at our uni that is just good for getting a job. Compute 313, Computer Networks. No idea how our uni teaches such an interesting topic in such a horrible way. Super outdated and awfully presented. The textbook was great. Compute 333, Security in a Networked World. My workload made me not do as much work as this course deserves. The prof is hilarious and the assignments were incredible, even if tough and time consuming. Compute 379, Operating Systems Concepts. Same prof as the security class. Similar feedback, but I did put more time into it, so I did better. Absolutely love this course. Math 228, Introductory Ring Theory. The class is not too bad in terms of content, but the prof made it horrible. Writing out all irreducible polynomials in Z mod 2 during the final is not fun. Sadly, I did not learn the lesson of not doing such horrible course loads, and it caught up to me later. But not now, and not in fall 2019. So let's get to that. Well, since I did manage to handle the insanity of the winter 2019 semester, I took on too much again. Compute 340, Introductory Numerical Methods. Actually, a good course that was taught by a very smart prof whose approach to teaching did not work for almost anyone. Compute 355, Games, Puzzles, and Algorithms. Honestly, I wrote a 100% final for this course by skipping all quizzes and assignments and crammed the course for four days straight. Surprisingly, retained a lot of info and liked the course overall. Compute 399, Introduction to Software Defined Radio. The most important lesson I learned in this course is that if nobody has the time for a research project, nothing will get done. Compute 429, Computer Systems and Architecture. What a beautiful course. This course is tied for my first in my books for the best course I've ever taken. Most of the info presented in my second video, I actually learned there. A surprisingly chill class in terms of workload though. Math 322, Graph Theory. A fun math course for a CS student. It's easy for a math course, but it is still a 300 level math course, keep that in mind. This semester's course load was better than in winter 2019, but not by too much. The worst thing is that it did not prepare me for what winter 2020 had in store. Even before the worldwide pandemic settled in, this year was off to a rocky start. It has finally happened, I took on too much work at the same time. If not for the university deciding to make all the courses pass fail for us, I would have lost 
any chance of going to grad school with this semester alone. So let's talk about it. Compute 403, Practical Algorithmics. This is a class used as practice for programming contest attendees. Holy crap, was I out of my depth here? I did contests, but I was not good. Fun class and totally worth it in the end, but oh god. Compute 466, Machine Learning. I really don't care about ML. I only did this course because my uni is world renowned for it. So much work for this class though, god. Compute 474, Formal Languages, Automata, and the Theory of Computation. What a great course on theoretical CS and complexity theory. It's not too bad, but definitely deserves to be a 400 level course. Compute 497, Modeling and Performance Evaluation. This is the other course that is tied for first for me. What a beautiful course in stochastic processes, queuing theory, and convex optimization. But God, was it a lot of work. Math 422, Coding Theory. A class about error correction and detection codes. Loved the class, but just had no time for it. I ended up getting 10% on the final just to pass. Again, pass fail. <laughs> this workload is too much, and I cannot recommend anyone try to do this. I learned a lot and actually retained most of it, but had no method to my madness and ended up mismanaging my time. However, in fall 2020, I did have method to my madness and it showed in the grades. You ever wanted to experience four months of 80 hour work weeks? No? Well, I did, so here's how I did it. Compute 415, compiler design. Do you want to pay for what is basically a full-time job of implementing a compiler front-end for a cool language with three other masochists? Then take Compute 415. This class sits comfortably number two of the best classes I've ever taken. Compute 605, compiler optimization. You technically can't actually take 415 and this course together, but I did anyway. A graduate class with a heavy research component along with a crazy project course sounded like a good idea to me at the time, and still is to be honest. Econ 299, quantitative methods in econ. It's basically introductory econometrics, but I had so much stats background at this point that it was really easy for me. Probably should not have been allowed to take it looking back. Phil 365, philosophy of computing. You know what? Surprisingly fun course, especially since I like writing. I actually got second in the class behind a philosophy student by less than a percent, and they also got an A, so, you know, take these grades as you will. And that concluded my entire degree. At this point, something I said before might not actually rest too easy with you. How did I spend 80 hours a week for four months straight in that last semester? And you know what? In a vacuum of what you know so far, that's a good question. But here's the thing. There's a lot more to being in university than classes, extracurriculars, discovering hobbies, passions, and making friends. Classwork took only 60 hours a week that semester. I solid 56 hours on average a week for the two compilers courses, and then four hours split between econ and philosophy. But again, that is really not all. I would have 20 hours a week that I would spend on other things. If you want to know what those things are and why they're as important as the courses I took for my degree, then subscribe to be notified when my next video comes out, as that is precisely what I'll be talking about. But in the meantime, this video was surprisingly fun to make, reminiscing about my time in uni. I had to actually cut the script significantly, as I do have a lot more to say about each course I took. But the video would have turned out close to 50 minutes, and I'm not sure you would like to watch that. Well, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.